But where does this show up in my equation? If we subtract 4 from both sides, we're going to isolate the absolute value. We'll get the distance of p plus 3 alone. This is where the 8 shows up. The absolute value, or the distance of p plus 3 from 0, must be 8. When solving absolute value equations, we need to make sure we get the absolute value symbol on one side of the equation alone. That way we can represent the distance. Once we isolate the absolute value, we want to check. We want to make sure that it's greater than or equal to 0. Remember, distance is always positive. So if we had a negative answer on this side, there wouldn't be any number that can make it true. There'd be no solution. This is a difficult concept, and it's one that we'll stumble upon to later. So now we're back into the same case before. The value of p plus 3 could be 8 units to the left of 0 at negative 8, or it could be 8 units to the right of 0 at positive 8. So let's split this equation up into two equations, setting p plus 3 equal to negative 8 and p plus 3 equal to positive 8, just like from before. And at this point, you might even be able to solve it in your head, which is great. For more complicated questions, it's best to stick to the equation solving. Subtracting 3 from both sides, p could equal 5, and subtracting 3 from both sides, p could equal negative 11. So the solution set, or the values for p, are negative 11 and 5. And just like all our other equations, we can check these values in our original equation to see if we're right. That's one of the beauties of mathematics. This can help build your confidence in math. If these don't check, maybe it's a good idea to look back at your work. You might rethink your process or catch a small error.